Brooksaw Antiques here. Today we have this 1935 Underwood number 11 vintage desktop typewriter. I'm going to show you how to use the functions and make sure they all work. First thing we're going to do is set the adjustable paper guide. And this helps you guide the paper in so it loads straight. This is the paper bell that sits on top, holds the paper down nice and tight. And your margins are located up front here. This is your right margin. <clears throat> I like to set that around 80 to get the full page. About right there. And <clears throat> this one I'm gonna put up, I'm just gonna keep it at zero. If you wanna move it closer to the middle, that's how you do it. Once you hear the bell, you're at the end of the margin. You hit this line space, get you back to the beginning. It skips one, two, or three. Right now, we have it on single, but if you want double, you just flip the switch down one. It skips two, one more, it skips three. That works good. We're going to keep it on single for now and finish typing. And as you can see, all the keys type nice and none of them skip or stick. I'll tape a sentence in red on the next line. To switch from black to red, you just to switch over to the red marker there. Gorgeous machine all the way through the way it types, the way it looks. Just absolutely beautiful. Almost 100 years old and it's still in excellent shape. I'm going to show you how to use the decimals before I take the page out. This has a decimal tab. So a lot of people might have one of these and don't know how to use it. It's meant for dealing with money, basically. Decimals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a tab. Actually, I'm going to see if I have any tabs first. So you're going to hit this. That's a decimal point. So there is a tab right there. I'm going to clear that. And we'll go back. Now it's going all the way to the end. Um, we're going to set one kind of right in the middle. So I'm going to do tab stop set with that this green button all the way to the right. And when you hit the decimal point, it stops at that spot. So we're going to put a decimal zero zero there. And it's still in red that's fine okay so we're going to go to the next line with this and we're going to hit the one button which is the next to the decimal and we're going to put one which is the l point zero zero next slide same thing but we're going to use a 10 one zero point zero zero hundred one zero zero point zero zero one thousand one one three three point zero zero and one ten thousand one zero 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 point zero zero. So if you look at that the way it's set, the tabs are set so the decimal stays in the same spot, but the numbers when you're dealing with tens, a hundred, thousand, or whatever, it changes where it stops. So it's kind of sophisticated, but uh, easy if you figure it once you figure it out it's pretty easy to do and it makes a lot of sense to pull the page out easy we're just going to flip this switch down on the right side there and it unlocks the rollers underneath the platen allowing you to pull the page out easy or load thicker paper like carbon copy or cardstock make sure you flip that up before you load the next page i'm going to show you how to clear the tabs so you hit the decimal which is basically just a tab then you hit tab stop clear on the left and now you shouldn't have any tabs when you hit the decimal button, it goes all the way to the end. I'm going to keep one in the middle just so whenever the tab gets hit again, um, it doesn't cause wear and tear by going all the way to the end. It'll stop at the tab. We've got a backspace on the top left. That works good. Shift on each side and a shift lock on the right right here. To clear that, you got to hit the sh left shift button. Up top, we have the color selector. We have a black and red ribbon. The, uh, the red's on the bottom, so when you switch it to the left, it just prints the bottom portion of the ribbon. When you switch it to the right, it prints the top portion of the ribbon. When you have it in the middle, it doesn't print anything on the ribbon at all. We're going to keep that to the right on black for now. Margin release. Get to the end of the margin. Um, it'll lock the keys, and you hit the margin release. It'll allow you to type past that margin. As you can see, it kind of works. Um, this model is weird. Um, maybe I'm using it wrong, but um, 
There's a margin release on this side too. So if you need to get past this, if you're like in the middle and you need to get past this margin, that's another margin release. So you just gotta practice to figure that out. I'm just doing this video for now. This is your, um, you push it in, this is your ribbon direction controller. So right now all the brand new ribbons loaded on the right side here, so it's pulling to the left. And that's where I want it. And if, but if you want to change the direction, you pull that out and it pulls to the right. And you can wind it just like all uh, most underwoods. That works good. You can also set and um, unset the tabs by if you push it down, that's setting a tab. Push it up, it's releasing it. So if you if you have a problem with the functions up top, you can manually reset them. And this little lever on the knob here, if you flip it up, it'll disable the spacing, which allows you to get to a specific spot on the page. You flip it back, each one of those clicks is one space, and the same concept when you pull this knob out. Each, uh, you can get to an exact spot, and you push it in, you get the clicks again. And that's it, now available on eBay or Etsy, search Brooksaw Antiques.